Greetings everyone. Today we are going to discuss post-mortem redistribution of opioids. I'm Ghadira Drael, Forensic Medicine and Toxicology Senior Lecturer at Faculty of Medicine Zagazig University, Fellow of the Egyptian Forensic Medicine Authority in Cairo, Founding Member of Zagazig Forensic and Clinical Toxicology Research Laboratory, and a Founding Member of Save the Safe Women Clinic in Zagazig University Hospitals. Does a post-mortem sample accurately reflect a drug's concentration at the time of death? Unfortunately, no. Postmodern drug concentration may not correspond to its anti-mortem level due to the phenomena of post-mortem redistribution. In 1960, Curry and Sunshine noted that the concentration of a drug in post-mortem autopsy is site-dependent, and G and his colleagues in 1974 were the first to report post-mortem redistribution, and then Many research works have been done to prove the occurrence of such phenomena. Post-mortem redistribution of drugs gained its reputation as a toxicological nightmare. Today, we are going to provide an overview uh, on post-mortem redistribution, particularly of opioids, and the current state of practice, finally, the future directions. Postmortem redistribution is referred to the alterations that occur in drug levels after death. This phenomena can significantly impact the interpretation of postmortem toxicology results. There are several factors that influence the postmortem redistribution, such as passive diffusion from reservoir organs, postmortem changes, postmortem interval, and drug properties. Drug reservoirs include organs with high concentrated capacity, such as solid organs, liver, lung, and heart, and hollow viscera as well, uh, parts of the GIT. Due to the close proximity of these organs to the great blood vessels, passive diffusion from reservoir organs is believed to be the primary source of drug postmortem redistribution. Concentration gradients are produced by the unequal distribution of drugs within the body during life and by the substances that are not completely absorbed by the GIT. The second factor is the post-mortem changes. After clinical death, cell death occurs. Oxidative phosphorylation ceases and ATP synthesis decreases. The anaerobic metabolism begins with accumulation of lactic acids and parabic acids. Therefore, pH, the intracellular pH drops and uh, sodium potassium pump fails, and the cellular membranes are destroyed with leakage of mitochondrial and lysosomal enzymes into the cytoplasm. Cellular acidification and autolysis can cause accumulation of basic drugs in tissues and decrease the protein binding properties of some compounds. Hypostasis, which is a post-mortem gravity-dependent blood movement, may contribute to changes in drug concentrations at different anatomical sites. In addition, the large number of erythrocytes are entrapped by blood clots and the degree of their lysis determines blood fluidity and movement. If a blood clot is obtained during blood sampling, concentrations of drugs with unequal distribution between serum and erythrocytes will be inaccurately measured. Bacterial invasion of the corpus starts almost immediately after death and metabolizes many drugs such as sulfur-containing antipsychotics and nitrobenzodiazepines. In addition, ethanol can be produced and rise due to bacterial metabolism, which is important to consider while investigating traffic accidents. Third factor is a post-mortem interval. Redistribution tends to increase with time, however, the environment in which the body is stored, such as temperature, has significant impact on the rate. 
cell membrane integrity is lost and various complex mechanisms of xenobiotics like transport, metabolism and storage reason cells fails over variable post-mortem intervals. The first factor is the drug properties like the protein binding properties, lipophilicity, volume of distribution, acidic and basic properties and residual metabolic or enzymatic activity. Here we want to emphasize that although more, almost all drugs exhibit some degree of post-mortem redistribution, lipophilic, basic, highly protein-bound drugs and those with the volume of distribution more than 3 liters per kg are particularly susceptible to this phenomenon. Opiates are natural alkaloids extracted from the opium poppy plant, Pepever seminiferum, such as morphine and codeine, while opioids are semi-synthetic and synthetic compounds that mimic the effects of opiates such as heroin and fentanyl. Nowadays, the term opioids has become a broad term for all drugs with pharmacological effects resembling morphine. Opioids are classified into natural, semi-synthetic, and synthetic opioids. Actually, the natural opioids like morphine and codeine, and semi-synthetic opioids like heroin and oxycodone, hydrocodone, and synthetic opioids such as fentanyl, mepridine, methadone, and tramadol. Opioids, either natural, semi-synthetic, or synthetic, are susceptible to post-mortem redistribution with variable degrees. Actually, opioids are medically prescribed as painkillers in cases of moderate to severe pain. However, they can also be abused for their ephoric effect. Postmortem redistribution of opioids pose challenges in determining the cause of this. For example, distinguishing therapeutic use from overdose and assessing the contribution of opioids to the fatal outcome. The extent of opioids redistribution can vary based on individual drug properties. Highly lipophilic opioids such as fentanyl and methadone have a greater tendency for postmortem redistribution compared to less lipophilic opioids. This table uh, demonstrates opioids properties and potency. We can see here that fentanyl and methadone volume of distribution can reach to 8 so more than three up to eight and they have uh, a high protein binding capacity here up to 19 case of uh, methadone so fentanyl and methadone are the most liable for post-mortem redistribution followed by oxycodone and uh, morphine the current state of practice in sampling, postmortem redistribution can lead to significant discrepancies, as we mentioned before, in drug concentration between different postmortem samples. Um, and compared to peripheral blood, higher concentrations may be observed in central compartments, such as in heart blood. So, the peripheral blood is recorded as a gold standard for measuring postmortem drug concentrations, and samples should be collected as soon as possible and stored, stored at adequate temperature. However, it's difficult to obtain peripheral blood in cases of advanced decomposition, severe burn, uh, or massive hemorrhages. In such situations, other matrices are collected. For most drugs, there is a lack of information required for interpretation and comparing concentrations in different matrices. Postmortem prediction ratios, where there are several methods that applied in current practice to predict uh, drugs redistribution, such as central to peripheral blood ratio and liver to peripheral blood issue. 
cardiac blood to peripheral blood ratio or central to peripheral blood ratio um, um, is the most applied in practice. Central blood is more susceptible than peripheral blood to post-mortem redistribution shift. Therefore, CP ratio is used to assess drugs' probability of post-mortem redistribution in forensic autopsy. And CP ratio is more than one indicates redistribution. In such cases, the allocation of samples from either a cardiac chamber or the pericardium alone may result in an erroneous interpretation of the results. Uh, although applied in practice, there, it has many limitations. It is known that drug properties influence postmortem redistribution. However, no relationship has been established between CP ratio and drug properties. Also, CP ratio cannot assess the degree of post-mortem redistribution in drugs, either significant, intermediate, or minimal. CP ratios, uh, more than one, was reported in some studies for drugs that are known to be not subjected for post-mortem redistribution, such as tramadol and salicylates. This may be due to statistical chance, arterial venous differences, and anatomical variability between individuals. Uh, also, artifacts of sampling when the heart blood is depleted by the collection of blood from the connected vessels and incomplete absorption or distribution in cases of acute overdose and resuscitation attempts may lead to CP ratios uh, less than 1. So, inaccurate ratios can be... Uh, can occur. Okay. Therefore, liver to peripheral blood ratio ca uh, came to the agenda. Since the post-mortem drug concentration is more stable in tissues, the confidence of measuring drugs in post-mortem blood is decreased. LPR ratios less than 5 indicate little to no propensity for redistribution and ratios more than 20 indicate post-mortem redistribution. Therefore, liver to preferred blood ratio has become a more reliable marker for prediction of drugs redistribution than CP ratio. Liver drug concentrations are often higher than those in the blood, providing an opportunity to evaluate drugs with a moderate degree of post-mortem redistribution. In contrast to the conventional CP that yields close ratio among different compounds. Well, recently, uh, mathematical models have emerged. Future direction for using mathematical models for prediction of a drug's liability and extent of post-mortem redistribution, such as the physiologically based pharmacokinetic models and the quantitative structural activity relationship models. Let's begin with the physiologically based pharmacokinetic models. They are mathematical models that represent the structural components of the body and describe the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination, or the ADME, processes of drugs or chemicals in the body. These models can range from simple one-compartment models to more complex models that include multiple organs and tissues, as shown here in the figure. Organs essential for ADME are included and defined by a differential equation. And for deterministic organs of blood concentration profile, such as GIT, liver, and kidney, details of the mechanisms are considered. Additional tissues and organs can be added according to modeling purpose and hypothesis. Uh, this is an example of the system data, such as uh, weight, age, race, gender, and genetics, organs function, tissue composition, tissue volume, cardiac output, and tissue blood flow. And there is a trial design of the drug's dose, administration route, frequency, co-administered drugs, and population. And lastly, the drug data, uh, uh, molecular weight, like lipophilicity, uh, protein binding, metabolism, permeability, and transport, solubility, drug-drug interaction, and receptor binding. 
Well, the physiologically based pharmacokinetic model's role in post-mortem toxicology, uh, it provides valuable insights into drug concentrations at the organ level, which can help understand toxicity mechanisms and validate tissue concentrations. For example, um, they have been used to study organ-specific toxicity, such as cardiotoxicity and drug-induced liver injury by simulating dynamic changes in drug concentrations in heart and liver. Also, uh, they can assist in accurately interpreting drugs that undergo postmortem redistribution. By incorporating the postmortem redistribution phenomena, they can estimate the original drug concentrations at time of death, aiding in determining the cause of death. The second uh, example is a quantitative structure activity relationship models. Well, um, it, uh, it is used to establish a mathematical relationship between the chemical structure of a compound and its biological activity or property. It involves the development of predictive models based on molecular descriptors that quantify the structural feature of the compounds. In other words, predictive evaluation of the properties or biological activities of chemical compounds based exclusively on their molecular structure. Well, these models provide a quantitative estimation of post-mortem redistribution and can help understand the contribution of molecular fragments in the post-mortem redistribution processes. This uh, model can be used to estimate the capability of drug redistribution across tissue barriers during the postmortem period and by utilizing confirmation independent molecular descriptors QSI models can provide insights into the factors influencing postmortem redistribution and predict the CP ratio of drugs. Here, we want to emphasize that post-mortem redistribution is a very complex phenomenon that forensic toxicologists must consider when interpreting post-mortem toxicology results in cases involving opioids. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. And feel free to contact me on my email, radir.mma at gmail.com. Thank you.